told him, look man, I don't care how many K's you can fit in your camera. Oh, hello there. <laughs> Welcome hello. once again to this, the 140th episode of the Drunk Doctor Who podcast, wherein we discuss the... 140th story of Drunk Doctor, of Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> the Mark of the Ronnie. Oh, Ronnie. Um, Old if you, macaroni. If you don't recognize this actress, don't worry. It's a new character. New character? The yeah. Ronnie. As in the mark of. <laughs> it was kind of like the um, yin to the master's yang mm-hmm. of sorts. Yeah, she's sort of a bad guy, exiled time lord, just like the master, and uh, she's a female baddie. We, we kind of had uh, like a bad guy team up, the master and the Ronnie teaming up mm-hmm. against the doctor, which has happened before. We, we saw, what was it, the Master teamed up with like the Santarans in the past? Well, he's teamed up with tons of people. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a good old, you know, Batman episode. <laughs> Got a couple of villains. Exactly. Right. I'm Hatter. This is Holden. If you haven't uh, watched this before, you chose an interesting place to start. Um, <laughs> Where are we drinking today, Hatter? Alright, but... Uh, if you're continuing on with this, this is the episode 140. I'm drinking Magma Flame whiskey, cinnamon whiskey. Today I went for the raspberry white claw. Mm. I thought I'd shake it up a little bit. Lime's my favorite. I always go with the limes. After having tried the raspberry, mm-hmm. raspberry's good. Still like the lime the <laughs> most, I think. Uh, um, just to let you know, Today is the 16th of January, 2024. That's today. Yep. Um, we didn't have one last week. Yep. Or yeah, the, we, we missed last week. And this is still not Monday, which we normally do it on. It's Tuesday. But June there were a couple of day. NFL playoff games last night that uh, my wife and I wanted to watch. So we postponed this till today. Two episodes, because we're doing the 45-minute episodes. Every single serial this season is two episodes because of the longer uh, length of the episodes. Except... Uh, next week's The Two Doctors, which will be three episodes. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, Alright, so the episodes aired Groundhog Day, February 2nd, 1985, to 2 9, February 9th, 1985. Alright. Yep, that is correct. Alright, um, anyway, so. Do we have any uh, Doctor Who news? I left week? my binder out there. I'll have to go. Oh. Get, well, if I go to the restroom or something, I'll grab it a little bit. All right. Uh, Doctor Who news. I did pick up the Underwater Menace. New Blu-ray. Yes, the uh, phone. Picked it up yesterday. It still has the Barnes & Noble tag on it. Um, and this is the animated the one. Remaster, yeah. Oh, well, no, no. We had watched the uh, the one that they put out with the reconstructions. Reconstructions. But this is the animated one as they keep going through and doing those. So we'll have to go back through that one on our cleanup. Right, and we will have one other cleanup to do at that time uh, because the Celestial Toy Maker Ooh. is supposed to be coming out in a couple of months. I've been waiting for that one. Yeah. Um, that one was the hardest to follow during the reconstruction. Yes, it was very difficult. There's a lot going on visually. One of the big questions is whether or not they're going to clean up the uh, one word in it or not. <laughs> the one word? Do they say the, the M word? Yeah. Um, for a little person? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by its toe is the modern version of that. But the actor who played the character was nervous and did the old fashioned version of that, which is the N word. Oh, but the N word, <laughs> I thought we were talking about uh, the M, M word. M word. Little people, midgets. Midgets. Yeah, that's not PC. No, there's no anymore. midgets in there. I thought um, the little clown guy was a little person. Maybe. I think I'm misremembering. <laughs> right, but anyway, so um, no, the N word actually shows up in the original story. The question is whether or not they auto oh, I'm, audio fix it. I'm sure they do. Or they, let it run. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Did we talk about that? <laughs> we did, anyway? back in the day. We did, back in the day, because it's a first Doctor cereal. I must have been doctor. drinking more than I do now. <laughs> so, oh, you, oh. you have cut down your alcohol consumption. I don't consider that at all. Uh, I'm going to have to go back and watch that. That was awesome, nearly five <laughs> years ago. 
Okay, I had but no idea. To be fair, uh, at this point, it looks like the BBC has two animation teams working to help complete the animations. Uh huh. So we, rather than having one and then a six-month gap, we've got one. We have one in a couple of months, and then by that point, we might have like four months from then another one. Mm -hmm. So they're they're almost doing it double time right now, mm -hmm. trying to get all the animations finished so they can release the first six seasons all complete with the animations. Mm -hmm. The only one they've released from that thus far is a second season uh, on Blu-ray, and that's because it was between the uh, animation uh, deals. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, we should release this when they shouldn't have, and now they'll have to, when they put out, hopefully the animated version of the Crusade, a specific disc that goes mm -hmm. in with that Blu-ray collection. Yeah. So here, here's a disc if you just want it on DVD, but here's the Blu-ray disc deal in the Blu-ray collection in with the DVD if you want it. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so I don't think they're going to touch any of the first six seasons, and they shouldn't have touched that one, but they thought the animation stuff was over, but then it started up again uh, with the deal with Sony and Bad Wolf and all that, mm -hmm. uh, and Disney. But I don't think they're going to uh, touch those first five seasons again until they complete some of them with the animation then they'll release them. I mean that would make sense. Yeah. There's but historically the BBC doesn't do things that make sense. Correct. <laughs> Except making the deal with Sony and Bad Wolf uh was pretty good. That was a good Yeah. Uh I'll give them that. Yeah. Season one uh needs one serial animated Marco Polo. Marco Polo and that's yeah. the one we've been waiting on. Uh, see right, season two needs only one serial animated. Oh. Which is the Crusades. Oh. Season three Needs most of the season animated. <laughs> um, season that one four got scrapped rather hard. So it did. Seasons three and four especially. Uh, season four needs two: um, the Smugglers and uh, the Highlanders. Mm -hmm. And season five just needs one serial left animated. And season six just needs one serial left animated. Is the Highlanders where we first meet Jamie? Yes. Nice. Yes. Okay. So they're gonna keep plugging in a bunch on season three because they need to. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I actually hope while they're doing that, and the Dog's Master Plan is going to be the ultimate one for season three. Mm -hmm. While they're doing that, I hope they actually finish up some of the ones. Cause they, it seems like they're trying to make it so, hey, you only need one more animation to complete that season. Keep the animation project going. In the meantime, we'll plug up holes in other seasons but leave. A single animation, so that's all you need. Intentional. Right, I, I, I do hope that they soon f complete at least a couple of the seasons to be properly released. Um, that's frustrating. It, it is. It reminds but, me of, you know, uh, you ever watch Monk? No. Well, I saw the first episode. It's yeah. about uh, the, the, you know, the premise, the detective who has OCD. Right, but he's ultra observant like Sherlock Holmes, but he yeah. can't communicate well. A uh, savant of sorts. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, and the he, whole shtick is that he he has really bad OCD and, and nervous tics, and so what they did was with the box set they were they released every season on on DVD, mm -hmm. and they're all the same. Whereas like the season number and then the picture of the show, except for the last or one of the seasons, second to last, they they flipped it. <laughs> so so they put the season number up here. And the logo down here. So if you <laughs> you have OCD and you're collecting the box set, <laughs> one of those is gonna be <laughs> just off. Yeah, it's actually kind of funny. Yes. Yeah, all I remember about Very him funny. is in the first episode there was a guy in a wheelchair, and the guy in the wheelchair claimed to be crippled or whatever. But mm -hmm. Monk noticed that his shoes had the same scuffings as a man who would walk around in shoes normally. Uh -huh. And so he wasn't busted. Right, he wasn't actually crippled. So then they went and they caught him. Uh, but I, I also watched the first episode. I don't remember anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's about how far I made it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, but that's that's it for the Doctor Who news. Um, we don't have a date yet for Series 14. Although they might be calling it Series 1. It's kind of messed up. Oh, like a whole... Okay, so Lord Disney wants to call it Series 1. So when you go on Disney Plus and see it, it says Series 1, so you start there. So, do but, they not but, have streaming rights to all the old Doctor Who stuff? From the specials on. 
the 60s specials on. Oh. None of the old stuff. So that's why they want to call it. Correct, correct. Well. So I don't know if it's going to come out. Right now I'm still calling it Series 14. Yeah. But I don't know if it's going to come out on the, the DVD Blu-ray and say Series 1 or Series 14 or even Season 1 or what have you. Mm. I don't know. We'll see. Well, um, we'll see what's official when they release it on, on DVD Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so that one's supposed to start broadcasting soon. Eight episodes. And then we won't get anything else till Christmas and then another eight episodes or ten episodes next year. But mm -hmm. hopefully we start hearing about and or seeing some of the um, spin-off shows that are supposed to be happening. Yeah. yeah. Did, um, it's cold. It's cold out. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? It's four degrees this morning. I remember... Uh, a few years ago, we were talking about the the electric grid, mm -hmm. and you have your little diagram on the wall there. Yeah, yeah. I know the diagram of the the three electric grids in the country on the wall. So it was a big problem Contiguous for for Texas during the freeze and all the, the wind turbines were freezing up. Now it's very cold n now. Yes, this year. But supposedly coldest. Uh, Iowa caucus ever in history. <laughs> uh, the Iowa caucus was today for the 2024 U.S. presidential election. Um, date the podcast right there. Yeah. Date it. Well, we already said the date. <laughs> right. So anyway, the uh, supposedly they winterized 305 of the 314 uh, wind turbines and other things that, that kept generating during that. So, so you don't it think we'll shouldn't have... fall down again. But I'm hoping. But. We'll see, yeah. <laughs> Alright. Um, anyway, so uh, when we do clean up, we'll have Mark of the Ronnie, and we will have uh, the Celestial Toy Maker. And mm -hmm. they did that one specifically because he shows up in the third of the 60th anniversary. Oh, so, yeah. Okay. He showed up way the hell back then, and now he's finally showing up now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He Just finally went from a one shot villain to a two shot villain. <laughs> 57 years on. Is he played by um, the How I Met Your Mother guy? Neil Patrick Harris Neil in Patrick. the new stuff, yes. How was his. He did that doctor show? Doogie Hauser. Doogie Hauser. <laughs> so the guy who played a doctor is now against the doctor. <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, anyway. Uh, only two episodes, like I said, because everything is, since our 45 minute episodes, it's only two episodes for this entire season. Um, except the two doctors, which will be next time. We're going to have fun with that next Monday. Is that not two episodes? Three. Three episodes. Three. It's the only one like that this Three season. Three 45 and it's, minute episodes? Yeah. So the two episode 45 minutes would be the traditional four episode 25 minutes. This one is what would traditionally be a six episode serial. And it's not even like a season finale or anything. No, there are two more serials after that. Um, we are right there in that gap, which is where that DVD goes. Yep. Then the two doctors, Time Lash, Revelation of the Daleks. Mm -hmm. And that finishes up the season. Uh, season 22. And then we start Trial of a Time Lord, which is season 23. And that's it for... The sixth Doctor, and then we go on to the seventh Doctor. I hear the Doctor uses a bomb of sorts for that one serial. Time rash. It's a rash. Time lash. Lash. Oh. Lash. And it's a bomb, not a bomb. bomb. <laughs> yeah. All right. So anyway, um, a pretty straightforward serial, actually. What would you think of it? Honestly, this was... I, I didn't like Colin Baker at all. In the serial? In general. You just don't like Up his in the Sixth Doctor? Until this point, he's just now starting to grow on me. Okay. And maybe yeah. it's the soften a little bit, but maybe it's that I'm kind of getting this new persona of the Doctor, where it's just this Aaron, you know, unhinged kind of... Hanyak. It, it feels like, yeah, <laughs> the Doctor has been let off his leash. It's the Doctor without <laughs> rules and, and morals, so you... But he, he's so bipolar and he fluctuates of, of, you know, oh, I'm a pacifist and I've given up guns and I'm this totally unhinged Miami maniac that doesn't but, care but about knock these human two guys into yeah. the acid pit. I mean, 
And you know, you got turned into a tree. Oh well. No, I mean the doctor was. The doctor tried to save those people, but anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, no, this this doctor is what you could easily call unhinged. Yeah, and I'm kind of. I, I kind of got that this cereal. Uh, you know, so you're finally starting to like him a little a bit. A little bit of the appeal yeah. to Colin He's, Baker, yeah. He is the hardest of the classic doctors to like. Um, and he is... Uh, they tried to make him darker. And, and, and they... Yeah, he starts out really dark. Choking period and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. He mellows out as time goes on. In certain ways. Like showing empathy and kindness. Yeah. Trying to save people, but in other ways, he never mellows out because he's still the uh, a bit of a jackanape, you know. It's still hard, yeah, yeah. insufferable. <laughs> yeah, insufferable. That's a great word, actually. Um, anyway, so the doctor's taking Perry to Ken Gardens or something. Mm-hmm. She wears a big dress. Yeah, a nice dress. Because uh, of- I like the Gardens. shoulders and um, the bright pink boots. <laughs> yeah, um, with heels. It's not at all flattering. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think the dress looks good. It's on a her. terrible really. outfit. She uh, looked at the doctor and was like, "You know, if he's dressing that badly." <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, they're trying to go there, and this is apparently sometime like the eighteen seventies or so, and they never give an exact date. But they're being pulled off course uh ge- geographically not chronologically they wind up in the time frame they're supposed to but they wind up in a different place even though it's another time machine maybe it's that's doing them that off yeah. Course. Yeah. yeah um anyway so uh they go out to investigate and the doctor's got a little machine that goes ping looking for a time disturbance and we're we're in the 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 neck of the woods where where do you, where was this <laughs> chronologically? Oh, 1870s, 1880s. I mean, uh, somewhere geographically, in uh, somewhere in England. Yeah, it's it's that uh, Yorkshire type accents with the oi and the. Okay. It's a, a, this weird muddled old English with. No, to be fair, the actors do their time period version of language justice. Yeah, I mean, the, the writing's great. Yeah, and I mean, the, and the people are uneducated, so they leave the out... The actors art, are they, spot on. They leave out articles, you know. Yeah. You know, don't, don't say load the gun, just say load gun. Oi, chicken, Jason. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> load gun. <laughs> load gun. Um, you don't say... I mean, they still don't, because we, ha- we have to go to hospital. <laughs> where, but, where'd the article go? <laughs> <laughs> so... Anyway, um, the actors do a great job. All the actors are in the story are pretty, pretty spot on. Oh, um, I, I give, I give everybody that. Um, the accents, the uh, colloquial language is great. The costuming is fantastic. I like the costumes as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the the only thing is the the story is fairly hokey. Um, I mean. I, I like love the Ronnie. Uh, she's a great villain. And when in the future when they make the master female, mm-hmm. I'm like, why did you not just bring back the Ronnie? She's perfect. We haven't seen her in uh, you know thirty years. Why did you bring her back? You know why did you have to do this? They really introduced the Ronnie as if she was going to be a recurring villain, where they have this weird dynamic between the master and the Ronnie. And the, no, we, we see her at a camp. We see her twice again. I do have that question. Do we ever see the Ronnie again? Twice. So we see her. Um, yeah, times? we we see her. Uh, same s- actress. Or same or? actress both times. Yes. Oh, cool. So we'll see her fairly soon. Then I can only assume. We that. will see her. Well, we see her in the Seventh Doctor era. In the in the uh, apocrypha. Yes and no. Oh. <laughs> same know. character. Oh, difference. that's where the main group is, and we are like five serials from them. Oh, does this loop back up here now? Yeah, that goes up there, yeah. Oh, okay. So it can be on screen. Uh, let's see. That's on screen. Well, when my head's out of the way, it's on screen. Let's see. Uh, 
Because I left my notebook you can, out uh, there. You can zoom in on YouTube videos now on your phone. The, oh, so fairly the time in the Ronnie. Um, the very first serial of the Seventh Doctor. Time of the Ronnie. Time and the Ronnie. So we see her in a season and a half, and then we will see her again for the 30th anniversary so, Children in Need special. Yes. So, okay, so there's a 30th anniversary Children in Need special that was originally going to be the 30th anniversary big special, okay? Uh -huh. But then Fox got the rights to do Doctor Who. Oh, this is just recently? No, 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 no. This is in the early 90s. Oh. So, 63, the show came out. 93, they were going to do the 30th anniversary special, like they had the 10th and the 20th. Mm -hmm. So, they came up with a big script, and they had all the stuff... Mm -hmm. And they were ready to go. And then Fox acquired the rights to do Doctor Who. And they didn't want the 30th anniversary special to confuse people as to what because Doctor Who was. Like, because they were kind of going to do a start the way they kind of did a restart now. And the way they did in 05. And what Disney wants to do. Right, right. Uh, so they, they, they said, okay, you can't do that. And they said, well... Can we at least do it as a non-canical thing for charity? And they said, in a cut-down version, yes. So they did a half-hour version. It was supposed to probably be like a, an hour and a half special. And it's non. It's not canon. Yes and no. It's produced by the BBC, made by the BBC, not technically canon. They said that it's not canon. No, they've never said it's not canon. Huh. The only thing they've ever said that it was not canon was the animated one with the uh, Ninth Doctor, um, mm -hmm. the Scream of the Chakla. Mm -hmm. So it could be canon, and it might be canon, but, um, and if you want to, consider it canon, but it has the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh Doctors, and uh, the Ronnie. Right. Oh, and the Brigadier. So why might it, why, why mightn't it not be canon? <laughs> because it was not made as canon, but as a children's special. And generally speaking, the children's specials for the Red Nose Day, the uh -huh. children in need, are not canon. Except the BBC has never declared it not canon like they did with Scream of the Chakla. So it's... it's, it's BBC produced, and there's very little apocrypha of BBC produced except Scream of the Chakla. Mm -hmm. But... Um, it is a children in need, so it you can argue either way, but it is it's a fun, silly mess. It I, really is. I feel like I'm gonna go ahead and lump that in with the canonicity of. I mean, at, at but, some point you're just splitting once I show it to you, you can decide then. You, gotta, <laughs> you, you should see it first. All right. All right. Anyway, so she's the bad guy in that, as well as in uh, Time in the Ronnie, and then we never see her again, at least up till now. Bad yeah, woman. Uh, in English as well as most Germanic languages, the male form covers both male and female, specifically when talking about multiples, but also when talking about singles. So male man is just fine, even if it's a female. But not in Latin. I don't speak our, Latin. But that's what our language is based on. Well, no, we steal a lot from Latin, but it's a Germanic language. That's true. Yeah. We steal a lot from every language. <laughs> we discussed this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Melting pot. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, anyway, back to the story. That's why none of the rules make sense. And correct, there's so many exceptions. Yeah. Alright. So the Doctor and Perry go off. Uh, you see this 1870s English village where there's apparently this guy named... Uh, what was his name? The Genius? George Stevenson? Yes, George Stevenson, who is basically going to revolutionize um, the Industrial Revolution. He's going to basically create the Industrial Revolution, and he's getting Faraday and other people who are geniuses of that age to advance society by a leap, um, by basically mechanizing things, getting machines to do things, and uh, they're having a big meeting in a couple days. Um, in the meantime, you see a few men leave the mine. It's just a dirty old coal mine, as they did. Hmm. Uh, and they're going to the bathhouse to get a bath to clean up for dinner. 
Uh, several other people go to get a Toby, uh, a pint or whatever, uh, beer, probably dark beer. Triple Tobies. <laughs> um, Why do they spell it with an A? Hmm? Like Tobia. No, it's Toby, T O B Y. Is that how they spelled it? Mm hmm. Oh, that is T O B I A S. Tobias is a name. Was someone named Tobias? <laughs> yes, Tobias is a name. Toby. In this episode. No, not in this episode, but in general. In the first episode, they say Toby's, but they spell no, it. No, T O B Y. In the subtitles? Yes. You were writing, I was reading. No. <laughs> To go, you know, put back a Toby as a beer. I mean, uh, you work, you work a good hard ten hours. You want a beer, and then you want to clean up and have dinner. Um, anyway, so these guys go to the bathhouse, and so far, we've not seen hardly anything science fiction. It looks like it could be a classic historical, historical. Yeah. Uh, but when, then when all they're in the bathhouse, uh, the old lady, the grandma-looking figure, um, who has a stoop and who has a cape over. You know, cover the face. A shawl, that's it. Uh, she goes into a room and the bathhouse guys get smoked. It passes them out. So they pass out. She has a couple of zombie like men yeah. uh, take them in. She puts a little deal on their neck, which creates a red mark. A hickey. Uh, yeah, it looks like a hickey on their neck. Um, and she's draining this fluid out of them. Melatonin, uh, basically. Maybe. I mean, they, they never name it. They just say the thing that allows you to sleep. What is it that the, the rich people in Hollywood are draining out of the kid, their blood? They, they plasma. 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 Yeah, transfusion to make them young. <laughs> mm. It's not that. <laughs> so, supposedly that's how... Um, uh, Keith Richard is still alive. Yeah. Uh, he goes to Switzerland. He gets this complete infusion of plasma from young people that mm -hmm. helps keep him alive. Yeah, as you do. Because that guy should not be alive at this point. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, although he may just have an insane constitution like uh, Iggy Pop. Iggy Pop, the fact that he's still alive and kicking is insane. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Some of those people are certain to, the Queen of England. Gone. Yeah, she was um, ninety something. Yeah. And uh who is it that just passed away? Kissinger. He was He was a hundred. A hundred. He was a hundred. He was on a book tour the last year. Oldest woman ever just recently passed away at like hundred and fourteen. Crazy. And 120 shall be, 120 years shall be the number of their days. 120 years. 120? Yeah. 120 years shall be the number of their days in the Bible. After the flood. She's like six shy of that. <laughs> She's old. We're talking about the maximum, not not the guarantee. <laughs> you hear that um, the life expectancy is starting to... What do they call it? The shark. It, it's that we've crested the peak and it's starting to decline. Like in Canada, their average life expectancy went from like going like this, and then during COVID did that, and now they're starting to do that. People aren't living this. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, that's a whole demographical thing. It, yeah. The problem is that the world's going to hell. As it's going to hell, you're going to die from more stuff. And the pandemic affected those numbers. And no one's had lots of people kids them. anymore. No one's getting married anymore. And mm -hmm. and what effect is that going to have on infrastructure? And these people that are paying into Social Security, right? They don't pay their own Social Security. They're paying like their grandparents' Social Security. So by the time they get old, it's the younger generation that's paying their social security but that is going to be like exponentially smaller than the current generation i have a book i have to loan you okay <laughs> peter zihan the end of the world is just the beginning i just feel like i should be out in wall street holding up the doomsday sign or something 
<laughs> the end is nigh. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. In the United States, uh, Mexico and Canada also, the mm. North America is doing okay with all the demographics. The rest of the world is screwed, <laughs> just flat out. Um, Japan is oh, dying. Earth, Earth. China yeah. is dying. Germany, Earth. Italy, uh, most Western or Westernized civilizations dying. Um, uh, United States, thanks to uh, some particular uh, religious fundamentalists like Mormons, um, Great uh, Amish, babies. <laughs> Amish, Mennonites, and Great Catholics, Catholics. And, and Very a, strong faith. Right, and a good bit of immigration, both legal and illegal. We're doing fine. Oh, yeah. Um, Mexico is, and to a lesser extent, Canada is. North America is a good zone. Uh, the rest of the world is mostly screwed. Um, either because they have the, the dying demographics, or because the world structure, i.e. the U.S. keeping the world safe from a lot of crap, but is ending, and these places that, like uh, Middle East, where they've not Israel, uh, Israel has built its own structure, uh, but lots of places like Yemen and uh, uh, Qatar and places in the Middle East that have built a structure based on the demand for oil, uh, based on the fact that they can build in the desert because they can get all the stuff cheap and everything uh, mm -hmm. from one place in the world. Uh, that's all going to end. That's going to recede. Uh, but I mean, we're we're hitting the end times, you know. But third world countries, their birth rates are just fine, I'd imagine, because they're not really as affected. As well, yeah, um, modernity. Yeah, what happens is, is as a culture becomes uh, affluent, mm -hmm. they rely, uh, they they turn away from having children because what happens is, if you are a poor country. Like we saw in tonight's video, mm -hmm. you have kids because they help the family. They work. Mm -hmm. You know, you saw the kids working in the coal mine and dragging the coal up the thing, right? There were kids. There were kids in tonight's cereal. Oh, I didn't know they were that. picking up uh, wooden pails and moving the coal to various places. Oh, I didn't see a single child. I'm child blind. I'll buy it. I'll, I'll shake on the, the, the Toby's thing. <laughs> <laughs> they spell that weird in the captions. T O B Y no, on Toby. Boy. And there were children. I, don't, I, I feel, believe you. I feel bad taking money. <laughs> <laughs> right. anyway, I think I still owe you a handle or something. Maybe. I, I think you tried to clean the. To be safe. I, I think I owe you. <laughs> right. So, anyway. Um, yeah, it used to be having kids was a benefit to the family, but in Western society, in affluent society, having kids money. costs too much yeah. money. Yeah. They they used to contribute, and now all they are is a minus. They just take it all from you. Mm -hmm. So having a child is is more of a, a detriment than a benefit. So people quit having kids. Yeah. Um, Can't stand kids. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean. Um, I'm married, but can't have kids, neither can mm. my wife. Uh, you're not married. Uh, mm. But yeah, we are two good examples of that for People modern America. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so, but the, the U.S., uh, thanks to religious fundamentalists, you know, m go forth and multiply. Mm. Uh, you know, Mormons, Amish, Catholics, um, and thanks to... Uh, a good amount of immigration, both, like I said, both legal and illegal. We're good on the numbers. Mm -hmm. We just need to make sure they want to work, you know? Now, the, that's going to be a problem is, is a lot of people don't want to work. Uh, but anyway, um, staying away from all that. <laughs> Sorry, rest of the world, you're kind of screwed. Um, Russia. Russia's in such a bad state on that, too. I'm going to go grab your notebook. <laughs> Oh, your and binder. a couple more of those. Right. I'm going to try to actually advance the stink of right. God. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing that t thing? Mostly argue. Argue. <laughs> what are you doing there? Mostly yeah, argue. All right. Okay, anyway. So the doctor and Perry go into the town. Uh, they, they, they find a driver of a coach who has a machine who gets attacked by these guys who are in the bathhouse and now have the 
suction things on their neck. Uh, they're smashed in the machinery. Anyway, apparently at the time, there was a faction called the Luddites, and they kept smashing up machinery because they thought the machinery were going to cost them their jobs. So, um, they smashed up the machinery, you know, and the doctor and Perry helped this guy. He takes him into town. The doctor's sitting there with his little beat machine, and uh, he detects time disturbance at the bathhouse, uh, which, of course, we've already seen that that makes sense. There's some scientific technology sci-fi thing going on there. Uh, so the doctor's looking for the Stevenson. Uh, he tries to gain access to uh, the factory area where they've got the factory in the office and uh, the mines and all other stuff. So you can talk to him, uh, kind of gains access, uh, but then he decides he needs to head back out and go to the bathhouse because uh, they get uh, some people like, hey, the bathhouse is the last time we saw them. They were going there. It's like, okay, I need to go to the bathhouse. So he disguises himself. Mm. In the meantime, sorry, rewind a little bit. The master shows up. Yay. Um, and the master uh, talks to the Ronnie and basically convinces the Ronnie partly by persuasion and partly by brute force that she should kind of align with him. He takes from her what she's trying to acquire, which is this uh, brain chemical from humans that allows people to sleep because she had, she was exiled as a time warrior like the master was from Gallifrey. Uh, she has a TARDIS and she is the ruler of a planet, but ruling that planet, she did some experiments and made the people there, the aliens there, not sleep. She's trying to extract the deal that allows you to sleep, melatonin or whatever, from humans' brains so she can take it back to her planet. And the Master's trying to kill the Doctor, and he's got some crazy cockamamie scheme to kill the Doctor, and he tells the guys the Doctor helped at least one of them get saved. You know, this is the guy who should go after, go and kill the Doctor. Uh, and the, so these guys find the doctor on the property, they break their way in, and they chase him to the shaft uh, just above where the, 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 the mine shaft is, and they start beating upon him with wooden planks and, and tree branches, and they're trying to knock him into the shaft, and he's holding, the doctor's holding on the chain. Uh, Perry's crying for help. Um, the doctor and Perry finally are like, okay, uh, they, they're, they're trying to drive them away. And then uh, Lord Stephen, no. Mm. Lord somebody or other, who apparently uh, is a gentleman who's funding everything that's going on, for the advancement of the human race. We'll get his name in a minute comes up, fires a gun, and the two guys run off. There were three, but one of them fell into the uh, pit, which is one of our six deaths. There are five human deaths and a dog. <laughs> and, we, and we noted the dog because it was kind of sad. Uh, the dog was guarding the doctor and Perry, and the dog got zapped by the master, first death. The master zaps another guard, second death. The guy who fell down the pit is the third death. And then later on, Ronnie kills three others. Uh, so, uh, Ronnie killed more people than the Master. Uh, so, the Doctor gets saved by this Lord Ravenswood, or whatever his name is. And they go back, and he's trying to get information from the Doctor, and says, yeah, you know, who are you? The Doctor's like, I'm a VIP. And he looks at the Doctor's hand, and he says, yeah, you've never worked a day in your life. You could be, a, you're not a worker, you could be a VIP, you could even, I believe, be a gentleman. He's like, hmm. So anyway, uh, yep. Knock, knock. Hey. Oh, thank you. I'm supposed thank to you. say who's there. Who's there? Sarah. Sarah who? I saw that Sarah fly saucer. <laughs> it's not a Laffy Taffy joke. <laughs> it should be. 
I don't remember where I heard that one. All right. Um. Anyway, so the doctor is with uh, what's his name? Lord what? You want a mnemonic device? No, I just want another name. His name is a uh, bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, but what is a raven's worth? Ravensworth. Yeah, that's his name. I think I literally just said Ravenwood. Ravensworth. Right, but I literally came that close to the oh, name. Oh, yeah, close, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just a minute, just a second ago. I mean, you said Ravenswood out there too. Right, but I think I just said. But anyway, so I'm like, okay, Ravensworth. Um, so anyway, he's trying to figure out what the doctor's about. Hmm? No, they won't forget either. <laughs> Stuck in your brain. I think a brain worm. Enough of this and I will forget. Alright. So, <laughs> Dude, can we talk about how the, the extras ate an actual Miller worm for the the episode? Where, are we there yet in the plot with the Petri dish and the okay. brain worms? Well, we're close. Okay. We're close. Alright. All right. All right. I have questions. <laughs> so the doctor's trying to find out what's going on. And they're, they're talking about the Luddites, right? Because mm -hmm. these men are... Destroyed the machinery. This was a thing back in that 160 years ago. And why aren't they called the Luddites? It was the name of the religious group that was against machinery. Uh, Amish? No, no, no. In the <laughs> United Kingdom. Oh, Luddites. They're they're like UK Amish, or the Luddites. Yeah, UK, uh, which included all of Ireland at the time. Ireland did not get its independence until like the 20s. Well, it still doesn't. All of it, right? Well, There's North, North Ireland decided to stay part of the United Kingdom. Yeah. But Ireland, the rest of it, uh, gained independence in like the 1920s. So at the time of the serial, those islands were all United Kingdom. There's something I just learned about with, with Ireland was the, like recently, you know, in the 2000s, earlier 2000s, there's a big issue with terrorism, more like the Irish car bombs. But... That, that was the 20th century. What are they called? The idea? Oh, this was in the... The, the 20th century. century. Yeah, 1900s. Oh. oh, well, that's when... Well, uh, that IRA, Irish Republican yeah, Army. Army. Irish Republican Army um, was attempting for decades to free North Ireland. Mm -hmm. But they were wonderfully, wonderfully gentlemen about it. But North they, Ireland doesn't want to be free. They right. Well, well they, the, the IRA would call in and say, yep, we got a bomb going off in your building in 10 minutes. Evacuate. And the people would evacuate, and the bomb would go off, and the building would be destroyed. But they didn't want to kill people. They just wanted to avenge their cause. So they, 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 were, they were very, I don't want to say English, but they, they, they were very kind and gentlemanly about it. Um, Maybe that's why their terrorism didn't work. It didn't well, work. The, the thing was, is that or um, halfway worked because they got half the country. Ireland is basically Catholic, mm -hmm. except the northeast uh, counties Protestant. that were settled by the Protestants. Right. So when Ireland voted to leave, it was a county by county thing. Oh. And the rest of it voted to become independent. And to their credit, the UK said, great, fine, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, except that northeast group of counties, which decided to say part of the United Kingdom, because they're the um, Church of England counties, uh, and Protestant counties. The IRA didn't like that. The IRA didn't, didn't like that, and there's a constant... They the whole country. Right. They, they, well, they won the whole island mm -hmm. as a single country. Yeah. Uh, but now it's I the Republic of Ireland mm -hmm. and North Ireland, North Ireland being one of the four countries the inside the United Kingdoms. Kingdom. Okay. Along with Wales, England, and Scotland. Hmm. Food for thought. <laughs> um, sorry, a bit of an anglophile, yes. and I like history. Yeah, uh, no, I know. Anyway, so... I'm just now hearing about the IRA, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Very big in the 70s, 80s, tapered off in the 90s. Yeah. And then there was a, a good bit of reconciliation, and they don't... They, they, they moved from a terrorist organization to a political organization in the 90s, which... Oh. It's not easy to do. <laughs> no, it's not, and it's only happened a few times. Uh, but that's what, if you have a civil, uh, civilized country, it can work. Like, the only reason India was able to leave 
the British Empire, mm -hmm. the way they did was because the British were civilized. They're diplomatic about it. And they, yeah, they were very civilized. Against a non-civilized country, they just slaughtered them all. You know, I mean, think China and Tibet, mm. uh, Tiananmen Square, think, you know, stuff like that. But if you have a civilized country, it can work. And it only worked for India uh, because the British were so civilized. Oh, speaking of the demographics earlier, India is the one, is one of the few countries in Asia that's okay doing great is. demographically, yeah. you know? I think I'm just now hearing about the IRA because there's, there's some tension in the waters so that that might be flaring up again. Did you hear about that? No. There's some conflict between uh, North and, and the Republic of Ireland. <laughs> and then apparently Conor McGregor is like a big, <laughs> you know, figure. I, and, and <laughs> I love that guy. He's great. Yeah. He, he, I mean, you know, if you do what you can do, and if you can do it that well, you more power to you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the doctor goes out, and he's trying to investigate what's going on. His, um, his beeper went off when they're passing the bath. Right, right, right. So he's investigating that. Um, in the meantime, uh, he disguises himself. He goes to the bathhouse. He goes in with the three guys. And they, the they walk in. It's like coin, coin. Second guy, coin, coin. Doctor just picks up the box and shakes it. I okay. love that. To make the rattling. It's like um, Home Alone 2, the, the sticky fingers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The sticky bandit. <laughs> <laughs> There's the the Santa the blind Santa Claus with the bucket of change. Yeah. <laughs> um, so dumb. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Let me see. And it makes the jingling sound. So the Santa, the blind Santa goes, "Thank you." <laughs> he goes, "I'm a genius." <laughs> That's all quits. <laughs> He's like. He stole 56 cents, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a... What a um, great movie. <laughs> I don't remember what movie it was, but there's a guy with a coin, but mm -hmm. it's on a string. You know, like when the, the, the hollow, the coin's a little hollow in the middle. Like the Chinese coin? Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's on a string, so he puts a coin in, whips it out. <laughs> Sounds like he's making a donation, then he whips it back out. Oh, he's, he's that stingy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for a blind guy, yeah. Um, okay, so the doctor goes to the bathhouse, gets gassed like everyone else, um, ends up on the table, and the uh, the Ronnie she's doing her is investigating yeah. him, and she realizes he's not human. She puts a strip on his head. This, yeah. you know, what strip that was? It's the very same strip that they put on the fish tanks. You know those. I mean, I guess it. I don't. know. Today they have strips you can put on his head to get their temperature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a temperature. But that's strip. what it looked like. But this is the 1980s. And I mean, you put those on the fish tank. Uh, they have the fish tank aquarium. Possibly. Yeah. She does that, and she 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 kind of looks at him. Well, he's not human. She she listens to the one side of his chest. Listen to the other side of his chest. Goes, time lord. Ooh. She didn't say that, but she, you can see she's thinking that. Um. Do we know that the Ronnie's the time lord? Not, Not yet. why, well, spoiler. <laughs> yeah, well, no, no, I've already mentioned it, but her meeting with the master. So, uh, then the doctor wakes up, he's bound on this uh, table, mm -hmm. and he goes, the Ronnie. Now, this is what I want to know about Time Lords, okay? Mm -hmm. We have seen Time Lords encounter each other many faces later. Like uh, the guy for Tom Baker who came out and said, wait, Alpha Gamma, what? You know, which his was his... schoolmate. Right, right, his old schoolmate, which that was his, his fraternity name. The but that was monk. Right, right, but that was supposedly three, at least three uh, faces ago. Years. How do they recognize each other when they've changed so much physically? The Time Lord sent. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. That's, that's the thing here. It's it like says it's like the master. How does he recognize the new doctor? There's the Ronnie. How does she recognize the doctor? My theory is that um, time lords they're they're not they're they're physically advanced beings. You know they have two hearts. 
Uh, they're not as susceptible to things like cold and heat and Correct. better Correct. immune system. I think that they've developed a sixth sense, kind of like animals can tell, you know, if it's their egg or someone else's well, egg. Well, it, it, it's a, I, I think it's an aura. Like, Time Lords give off a certain aura well, they do have, that goes beyond their physical face. We, we've seen they have telepathic powers. Yeah. Uh, mind been... melding and whatnot. So, <laughs> are, are they recognizing a particular brainwave? Brain, yeah, that's a good They point. might be recognizing a particular brainwave. Mm. Uh, as odd as that sounds, it's probably the most plausible explanation. Mm. Anyway, so the Doctor and the Ronnie talk, and the Ronnie's like, Doctor's like, wait, you were kicked off, or, you know, got off, or yada yada. And uh, the master comes in. Uh, the master and the Ronnie leave briefly, and then Perry comes in. She was following the doctor. Mm -hmm. She comes in to save him. She's trying to save him, but she's not quick enough, and she bungles it. And then the master and the Ronnie come in. They show up here. Yeah. yeah, they show up, and the doctor, the master, convinced. Uh, the miners who were messed up with the Ron mark of the Ronnie to get the doctor's TARDIS out of the uh, and drop it into the mine, mm -hmm. um, and they they do that. But then the doctor convinces the master that what he sees on the screen, which is them dropping it in the mine, is not real. Yeah. So the master who's holding the vial that he got of the the, the melatonin, the brain stuff from mm -hmm. the humans, uh, he says, okay, I'm going to destroy this if you don't let me take Perry. <coughs> God bless you. Well, thank you. Um, take Perry. So Perry rolls out the doctor onto the street, out of the bathhouse, mm -hmm. and um, they're watching these men take the the, the TARDIS to do dump it out. Mm -hmm. and, and they do. They dump it down the mine shaft. They dump it down the mine shaft. And then the doctor... Never to be seen again. The doctor kicks uh, the, the gun thing out of the master's, the master's hand, the, the and thing he goes, that "Looks like the dildo." Right, right. Push Perry, run, and she does, and she pushes him down pushes the wrong him downhill, <laughs> the wrong way. He's like, "No, not that way." She's like, "I'm sorry," and he goes downhill. But never to fear the the uh, the six men who just destroyed his car. Yeah, yeah. stop uh, the like, car. Hey, stop the car. Yeah. He's like, "Oh, thank oh, you." Thank you. And then they lift up the top capsule and then they, they, put, they the, put it on a mine car. They push him towards the shaft. You're like, ah! End of episode one. In. Yeah, because you see him hurling towards the uh, empty mine car. End of episode one. All right, so episode one. Mm -hmm. uh, not many questions. I have a couple of questions. All right. Uh, we talked about the Tobies. Because we're turning here. Mm -hmm. uh, the TARDIS pulled off course by the time machine, obviously. The the Ronnie's TARDIS, we find that out later. Oh, no, the Master's TARDIS, I think, did it. Oh? Okay. Well, I think so. Uh, the Master had pulled them off course. We, we never we even assume it's his it. TARDIS. Okay, so talking about the Master, Perry says, I thought he was dead. Because Perry met the Master during that whole chameleon. She met the Master, Chameleon, and Colin Baker all in the same... Uh, episode. No, not Colin. She met the... Was that one that's still Davison? Yeah, that was Davison. So this is Colin Baker's first serial with the Master. Well, it's only his third, fourth serial. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. So Perry... Seen... Yes, this is his first time the Master show, not for him. Perry knows Perry knows the Master. But, but he, of course, died the last time she saw him, but except he didn't. Now, that's a trope we see with the Daleks, where it's like, oh, the Daleks have been... Wait, 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 wait. has she seen the Master before? Yeah, yeah, the whole episode with the chameleon, and then the Master was turning into half chameleon, half not chameleon. No, 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 that's, 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 um, that wasn't Perry. Yeah, it was uh, Perry, and, and that was when we were first introduced to Perry, and the young gentleman who is her father-in-law or something that didn't want her to go off to Paris. And then he ends up to... The, the chameleon turns into... The case of Andrew Is that what it's called? Cool? Planet of Fire. Planet of Fire.
That would be final fire. Uh, yeah, the master. And the planet of fire. fire. Yep, that was Which, it. She did meet the master and the planet of fire. Yep, and that's where we pick up her beginning. Yes, that's oh, wow. yeah. It was planet of fire. Her very first serial, and um, the last one for uh, chameleon, and the last one for turbo. <laughs> chameleon dies. He was ever two whole Thanks serials. So, the master we see. Steps into the gas, the gas catches on fire, he's incinerated, um, the master's dead, but he comes Supposedly. Back. Yeah, and, and that's more plausible when they're talking about a race of things like, oh, the Daleks as a race has been destroyed, and then they pop back up again. It's like, oh, that's feasible, because, you know, it's a race, you know. There might have been a, some dormant, you know, test tube Daleks somewhere. But the master's just a singular being, right? So we see him die and, and you know, be hurled off the screen. At, at one point, they're in E space and, like, this this godlike entity this, that's running, you know, he's the prize. And when you win the race, you get the prize, which is enlightenment. He himself banishes the master into purgatory and then he still comes back and it's like well that's plausible with like a race of alien villains but the master is just one person and when he gets shunted off into east space and in the purgatory how does he keep coming back <laughs> how does he do it and like does he even have his tardis anymore we don't see the his tardis in this serial how does he keep coming back yeah. uh first of all is it ever? He should have been the timeless child. Uh, second of all, might be. He might yeah be in theory, but no, not not the way it comes down. I don't down really know. What not the way it comes down in the end. No, unfortunately, um, it could still be retro. So they did do more explaining on the. Yeah. Did it clear up with? So okay, <laughs> we'll talk about that. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so the master as a villain has a nearly infinite ability to regenerate and come back. And at one point he dies completely. He's cremated mm -hmm. by the doctor. Yeah. But his ring has, has apparently some sort of his genetics. And they sacrifice people to bring him back from his ring. He's like Voldemort and his horse Kind dies. of, yes. Yeah. Yes, kind of. So the, the master's gotten past this uh, limit of you know, regeneration. At He's least once, if thing. not twice, yeah. yeah. Okay. So With, that makes sense because he's a Time Lord, but he, his um, motivations are more uh, selfish and egocentric. So it would make yeah. sense that he would unlock the potential to go beyond the set amount of regenerations. And the, he would make little gadgets, little... little uh, Horcruxes. Um... <laughs> What do you call the, the liches? Oh, thing? oh. Well, Horcrux works just fine, yeah. but I, I think there's another word for it. Anyway, what other questions do you have? The Master shows up. The ability. Oh, the Master, and you commented on this, has the ability to unlock wooden doors and wooden locks. Yes, yeah, he, he has a device that looks like a garage door opener. Not not quite a sonic screwdriver, but the new what? doctor's sonic screwdriver. Supposedly, a traditional sonic looks like a mouse, like not a like not a, a computer mouse. A computer mouse. Haven't watched the episodes. I want for them to release you in the U.S. Just like it's more oval shaped than the whole yeah thing. yeah kind of like the masters here. But anyway, so the masters sonic device. It's never called anything, hmm. but his device. Works on wood, which the doctors never works on wood. But does so the limitation work on metal locks? Cause yeah, it does laser constantly. Cut. Well, no, he laser cuts a, a metal lock. Well, the masters. That was a different device, more like yeah. a sonic lance, uh, yeah. which we've seen. But the the he has a device that works on the metal, the wooden lock that opens it. You know, the bar on the door, mm. and that was like, wait a minute, why doesn't the doctor have that? You know. 
I feel like again we can kind of go into the the master. He's more uh, selfish and egocentric, so he's gonna tend to be more ingenuitive towards weapons and gadgets to break in and entries and sustain his, his mortal being. Whereas the doctor, he's he's uh, ingenious and ingenuitive, but he's not really motivated to create and construct selfish tools. Yeah, don't know. But uh, again, <laughs> yeah, like you're not sold on that theory, and, and no. I, I would disagree with that myself, because it's like, <laughs> why why hasn't the doctor made a tool to like wooden doors? Or a, something to do with self-defense, like why would he not have some sort of knockout gas that he just carries in his deep pockets? Sometimes he does. Any other questions on that episode one? Um, that's it. That's it for episode one. Alright, episode two. Uh, the doctor gets saved by a man who turns out to be uh, Stevenson. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. George Stevenson. George yeah. Stevenson. Uh, the doctor, uh, they managed to fight off the brigands who were trying to throw him down the pit. Thanks to his flintlock pistol? Yeah, well... Let go of the girl or I'll blow your brains out. <laughs> Alright, so... He, he uses it a lot more effectively than Ravenson does. He goes, blam, shoots it off and goes, don't move or I'll shoot you. <laughs> well, he's bluffing. Like, and his bluff works the it. first time. But the bluff doesn't work the second time when they overrun the guy, remember? No, yeah. 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 Uh, so anyway, the doctor gets saved and... Does he shoot off from the, the ceiling again? <laughs> no, later. I don't remember that scene. No, th there's a scene where... Uh, not the doctor, but the one guy... Uh, not uh, Ravenswood, or Ravensworth, but the, the he gives his gun to another guy, and the other guy... Shoots at but misses and then gets overrun. Oh, he misses that. I remember yeah, that's gets overrun. Uh, so anyway, yeah. I'm fascinated with that TV and apparently that pen. All right, all right. Advance the plot, would you please? <laughs> okay. I'm gonna use the so we're in episode two. The TARDIS has been thrown down this coal shaft. The Doctor was hurtling towards the coal shaft, but da 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 da. Here to save the day is George Stevenson. Uh, he's a little distracted by the contraption that the doctor's strapped down onto. He's like, oh, fascinating, these little handcuffs. <laughs> the doctor's like, do you mind? He goes, oh, yeah, excuse me. And he, he, he unclaps the, the handcuffs, and the doctor gets up. Uh, just as the, what were they called, the Luddites? The, the, the brigands, they're, they're running up, and they're going, oh, there they are, catch them. And, and uh, Perry goes, I think we, it's about time we make our hasty retreat. And, Stevenson goes, yeah, uh, follow me. My workshop's just this way through the woods. We can, you know, get away from them. So they, they sneak off through the woods and then they, they make it to see George Stevenson's workshop where he's working on this uh, weird little one-man locomotive steam engine thing. And and the doctor, of course, is, is uh, very fascinated with, <laughs> with Stevenson's ingenuity in, in terms of, of steam-powered engines and he's, he, you know, he's under there doing a little mechanic work with him and, and chatting with him about stuff and and Perry's like uh don't we have like more pressing matters to attend to and the doctor goes oh no yeah you're right we'll, we'll talk about this you know uh, chemistry products later we'll we need to focus on on what's going on here so they, they kind of sum up what they found out so far about how the guys with the hickeys and and they have uh you know the, the they're they're very aggressive and and how the tardis was pulled off track is kind of just a, a general recap while they're sort of figuring out what's going on there in Stevenson's workshop. We we cut over to uh, Luke and the Master. Uh, I don't know if we talked about this yet, but the, the Master, he mind controls Luke with his little pocket watch. Uh, Luke being the son of, not Ravenson, Jack Ward is the father of Luke, 
who is, by the way, just the most incredibly attractive young man. He has the whole butt chin thing going on, very gaunt, blonde hair, good looking dude. Uh, <laughs> he's uh, he, he runs into the master, the master pulls out his little pocket watch and mind controls him, and then he feeds him one of those grub worms that uh, the Ronnie had, which kind of puts them in the state of of total obedience, and they take orders, and so the master says, uh, well, the master frisks him, and he finds this letter about how they're calling off the meeting of the masterminds, and, and how it wasn't safe, and there are, you know, these brigands running around causing riots, and they should just, you know, find another place, another time to meet. The master goes, no, this is terrible. We must make sure that this meeting doesn't get canceled, and that's the order he gives Luke. So Luke's wandering off back to uh, the Ravenson grounds, and he runs into Lord Ravenson, and Lord Ravenson's, you know, kind of uh, expressing the same sort of sentiment of, oh, there's, you know, lots of stuff's going on, it's dangerous, we should just call off the meeting. And, and Luke, prepared to do whatever's necessary to make sure this meeting stays on task, he kind of reaches down and he grabs this this iron stick and he goes, well, now, hold on, I was just talking to George Stevenson and he says this meeting absolutely should stay on. And he goes, are you, really? You know, with all this dangerous stuff that's going on? He goes, well, he's really excited about this. Looks like his ass off because yeah. the master converted him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we talked about the grub word. And, and um, Lord Ravenson goes, well, that... Ravensworth goes well. That that seems kind of like a selfish reason, but I guess you know if, if I've you're always saying, trusted him. You say, yeah, yeah. So Luke Luke puts down the he, he crowbar. I'm saying a crowbar. Yeah, he doesn't end up bashing <laughs> his brains out. Uh, and then we we so the meeting of the masterminds is cemented. It's going to continue. So the master's plan is underway. Uh, we flash back to the workshop of George Stevenson where the doctor and, and Stevenson's kind of cooing over their locomotive steam engine that can go up to 20 miles an hour. And 15, like, maybe 20. Maybe 20. <laughs> Barry's like, uh, don't we have more important stuff to be, you know, taken care of? They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, t you know, yeah, we'll so talk about this later. There's, there's a whole bunch of stuff where the master is dealing with the Rani, and the Rani's kind of dealing with the master. Mm -hmm. um, they end up leaving the uh, bathhouse mm -hmm. and heading off uh, into the caves, because that's where the Rani's original place was. Right. Uh, in the meantime, as they're leaving, they kill a couple of people. She already killed the one mm -hmm. who was trying to hurt the master. Yeah, she just... Zap so and, and and the the mark of the Ronnie becomes she, bigger and they're dead. She first tells them to stop the master and then he's being so rough with them. She's like, oh, he's gonna break the file, file of uh, melatonin. <laughs> yeah. So so I guess she just executes yeah. them. I think and then, he dies. then she executes the two helpers. They leave. Um, and then the the doctor and Perry go at, back to the bathhouse. Mm -hmm. And. The doctor looks at this Chinese screen, and he's like, "Hmm." Which, which I thought was her TARDIS. Yeah, she did actually. But it's not the TARDIS. And the master goes up and kind of uh, tries to pull the trap, and the trap goes off, and yeah. it's mustard gas. Mustard gas of all things. Yeah, and they use the the masks that the pull assistants the had, instrument, yeah. so that they could go in. Well, the guys were being gassed, you know. That's what they have. Yeah. So they save themselves by that, and they move the screen away. And there's a cabinet, which is obviously the Ronnie's TARDIS. Yes. And the doctor pulls out his key, goes in. So his key works on other TARDISes? It's a Type 40, yeah. So only on Type 40s? Yes, only on Type 40s. Now the Ronnie doesn't have any issues with her Type 40. Why is it that the doctor's Type 40 is so janky? Is it we this? don't we don't know at this point, but we later find out that it's janky because it the recall. doctor the doctor took it from uh, a repair shop. It was on recall. He, he stole it from a repair shop, and that's why it's always so janky. And he never fixed it. 
He, he, he continues to work it, on yeah. it, but yeah. and, and in this episode, the, the he, doctor he, showed working on it. Yeah. yeah. And she goes, oh, the, the TARDIS being weird again. He's so insulted by it. Like, I just fixed it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, yeah, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that happens early. So the doctor and uh, Perry are in the Ronnie's TARDIS, and they see... Test tubes, yeah. Tyrannosaurus Rex embryos inside of... Uh, well, not quite test tubes, but... Well, test tube babies of T-Rex babies. And... Just... It's kind of unnerving. Brain jars, yeah. Yeah, it, it'd be more unnerving if it if it wasn't so glaringly fake in 4K. You know? yeah. Also um, creepy. Like, it's still creepy, yeah. yeah. So it's, they're messing around in there, mm-hmm. and uh, something goes off. I was like, Perry, get out of here. He doesn't run. She has enough time to run. He could run with her, before her, or after. He doesn't run. Um, she gets out. And the TARDIS that he's in, the Ronnie's TARDIS, goes down to where her uh, she was originally set up in the deep in the mines. So the Master and the Ronnie recall her TARDIS into the mine shaft, and then and the Master's like, "Ooh, away set it up us. by remote control! How you amazing!" Figured out how to remote control a TARDIS, which apparently has never been done before. Well, yeah. Why? <laughs> because it's so protected by um, all the fields that the TARDIS now, generates. There's been moments where the Doctor went into a TARDIS, set the controls, left, and with the but controls it wasn't being remote control. set... And so why couldn't you have a remote control set the controls remotely? There's a little more of that later on. <sighs> but mostly it's done in advance as a program, not as a remote control. It's like it's like someone makes a birdhouse and then someone hangs it in a tree and he goes, Oh my god, you figured out how to hang the bird house where the birds live in the tree. You discovered a string, and it's like, is that... Okay, that's kind of obvious. There's a lot of technology you have to get past to remote control the TARDIS. Like a metric uh, yes. crap to month. Okay. All right. So, so she has a, the TARDIS key fob, yeah. and, it, and it Tesla's down into the... Not quite a key fob, although the Doctor does have a key fob later on to lock his TARDIS. The tenth, the tenth Doctor walks out of his TARDIS, ching, ching, and it closes and locks you. <laughs> See? Like a car. And the Oud is not impressed. The Oud? The Oud. Companion? Not a companion. What's the the Oud? Oud. You'll find out in about four to five years. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, How long ba- have we been doing this? Five and a half years. Really? Yeah. Oh, and we're only on episode 140? Are we halfway? 140 of 300. 300. Okay. Close 305 to or 6 minutes? Not quite halfway. <laughs> Crap, but we've got a bunch of side stuff to go through just about. Another well. half decade. Yeah, you know, got another 6, 8, 10 years ago. Who knows? Uh, anyway, God willing, we'll catch up to all of it. I mean, we're, we've are we caught up to the main group, haven't we? No, we're like oh, no, 7 yeah. serials short. Oh, no, we'll catch up to it. We will, during the seventh Doctor. At one point where we cut up, or we never cut up? No, we never cut up. We're ah, get, we close. keep getting closer, but during the seventh Doctor, uh, McCoy, we will catch up. So is your main group still watching weekly? Yeah, well, mostly. Like, we're watching weekly, mostly. Mostly. Yeah. yeah. I am mostly. So, uh, the I'm, do- I'm proud of our consistency. I am. Yeah. That thing works. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to Monday. <laughs> if you're watching at home, this Tuesday. is what you should drink. All right. It is the Tuesday night podcast because... Because of the NFL games this Monday. The first, the first time they've ever had any playoff games on Monday in the entire history of the NFL, the entire 103-year history of the NFL, they had playoff games on Monday. What is that? No, uh, they were just trying to maximize the audience, but it was funny because it was MLK Day, so... Good turnout? Bad turnout? I don't I have no idea the ratings. I don't, I don't pay attention to that. 
Not for <laughs> NFL. All right. So, um, anyway, uh, the doctor is hiding out in the Ronnie's TARDIS. Uh, Perry makes her way back to the office. Luke has been not exactly hypnotized. He's been bitten with that little grub yeah, he ate. We talked about that. Um, and he takes Perry out to Redford Glen or Red whatever Glen. So, Lissa mentioned something that Luke was attractive, and that's just well, yeah. He looks like um like uh, Ledger Heath Ledger Heath Ledger during like uh, Night Steel. He was a fairly attractive young man. But the moment she said that, it just ruined the character. <laughs> That's all I could think about it. She said, man, he's a good looking dude. And that's, that's all I could think about. Every time he's on screen, it's just like, he is a good looking dude. He has the, like the whole butt chin thing going on and the blonde hair. So every time and, I'm and like... fairly thin and young. <laughs> you, you can't get past that. Huh? I couldn't get past it. I'm like, he is attractive. Wow. Okay. Um, I mean... I can acknowledge you're good looking man, but <laughs> damn, I'm not that I distracted. Just, I, I was very distracted. I couldn't <laughs> pay attention to like his character being mind controlled. I was just like, that's a hot dude. <laughs> okay. Um, like Brad Pitt and Fight <laughs> Club. With the, the v line. Yeah. They never show that. It's just... Well, not for uh, Luke, but for Brad Pitt. Yeah, I mean, Brad Pitt and Mike. I imagine Luke would have, he, he, he looked fit. I'll say that. No, I think he looked fit. I don't think he, looked, he didn't like fit like Brad Pitt and Viper. Not that fit, probably. No, not. Uh-uh. Okay. So Crazy anyway. Crazy physique. Um, two percent body fat. The doctor goes out uh, with Perry, and they go out and they go to Redford and Glen or whatever it's called. Redford mm-hmm. Dell. Did you get the name of that? Nope. All right. They got the I did get Del. the name of Miasmia Gora. <laughs> yeah, the planet just... that the Ronin controls. So, they got to Redford Dell, and I'm not 100% sure what the Dell is, but it looks like a, a glade, um, a uh, depression in the forest. And she's going Valley. there. Huh? Valley? No, Valley's a, like a depression between mountains. It's like a depression mm-hmm. in a forest, just a meadow. Kind of. I, I think there's a difference, but I don't know what it is. Glenn. I thought Del. Glenn's... Dell. Oh, I don't know what the Dell is. D-E-L-L, Dell. Yeah, I don't know that. Like, like Dell computers. So, right. a meadow is in the forest, which is like clearing of trees with uh, fauna, like flowers. Mm-hmm. And then a meadow is the same thing, but in a plains, right, with, without the forest. I think so. And then a, a Dell must be somewhere in between. <laughs> I have no idea. I know no. Anyway, so uh, they go this Dell, and there was a idea. trap set by the Ronnie and the Master for the Doctor. It's so a whole bunch of landmines. Anyway, oh, the tree mines. Yeah, <laughs> apparently these landmines turn a human or any organic form into a tree. So. Um, what's his name? The kid, Luke. Mm-hmm. He he's going through and he's looking for these plants to help uh, with a sleeping the potion for his father. Because that's why they're so aggressive. Cause they and he gets get he has a landmine turned into a tree. Totally understandable. I get also very aggressive when I'm tired. What the hell? What? <laughs> Right. So, you do you, did you, you count him out. as one of the deaths, or did you ca- not count him as a death? Who, Luke? Yeah. So, I did. You did? I did count. So, six plus a dog is the total. Okay, so Luke would make six. Including yes. the, wait, wait, the wait. Luke tree, but I didn't count the two other trees. Why not? I don't know. If you're going to count Luke, you got to get the other two. So because there's eight, not eight human deaths and a dog. Is a is a, a polymorph a death? Because they're still technically. That's what I'm asking you. If you count Luke as a death, you have to count the other guys as a death. If you I don't count Luke as a death. You don't count the other guys. Well, Luke was more important than the. <laughs> That's irrelevant. <laughs> a death is a death. He was more attractive, so his life. <laughs> oh, okay. So eight deaths and his dog. So. 
the statistically, if you're an attractive person in a, a jury trial, you will get a lower sentence if you're more attractive. Then if you're unattractive, you'd get a harsher sentence. I can see that. By the judge. Okay. All right. Pays to be pretty. So the doctor... The doctor, Perry... The doctor goes out there, knocks the uh, weapon out of the master's hand, (laughs) um, holds it on the Ronnie and the master, and uh, Perry eventually manages to get held by the Luke tree. So he doesn't walk in and become a tree. Yeah, he saves her. He's Which are, apparently, like, the trees can move. I guess so, and to, like, <sighs> maybe still a little bit human. Anyway, so, uh, Perry manages to get out of the, the minefield because but, the Ronnie leads her because the doctor's gonna kill her if she doesn't. So they get out of the minefield, and uh, the doctor is trying to lead them back, and a bunch of angry mobby Luddites are going into the Redfern Dell. Yeah. Because they were told to go to the Redfern Dell to Mor- defeat these people. Morality moment. Yeah. You know, uh, so Harry's like, they're going to turn into trees when they step on the mines. Doctor's like, ah, do we care though? And she goes, we care for morality's sake. And then well, the, Perry, and the doctor does the right thing. Yeah, well, only because Perry really talks him into it. She goes, I can take the, the master and, and um, the Lurani, the pr- you know, prisoner. I can hold the gun. I'll, I'll walk him to the mine shaft if you save these people. And the doctor goes, all right, that's, right. A, that's that, a plan. That, I'll that's save not them. quite what happened. It's close enough. <laughs> so the, the doctor goes out to save them. And he's like, stop. And next thing you see him on a stick, like he's going to be in the road Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars. The, 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 yeah. The, are the Ewoks? Ewoks, yeah. Yeah. Wookiees, Ewoks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the doctor's captured by the people he was trying to save. Uh, they go into the Dell. Two of them get hit by the tree. They step on the tree mines. They become trees. But there's another one down there. The doctor's trying to get off his stick before he hits it. He, he manages to... If you haven't seen the serial, you have to picture how absurd it is. <laughs> it's fairly absurd. The doctor to be carried on this little spit-roasting pike, and then they step on landmines, and, and then turn, turn into trees. trees, and now suddenly the doctor's hammocked in between these two trees on the same spit. I can't argue with that. It's such it's a true. weird series. <laughs> it is, it is. So the doctor gets out. It's just a matter of balance. Just a matter of balance. He manages to work if his way out. If you saw that out of context, you would be like, what, <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> What's happening? All right. So the doctor heads off. Um, in the meantime, uh, Perry is leading Ronnie and the Master into the mines. Um, and... The Ronnie starts going, oh, I need my pills, I need my pills. Mm-hmm. And she pulls out one of the little caplets, throws it on the ground, knocks out Perry. Ronnie and the Master head off towards the Ronnie's TARDIS. I feel like the Master and the Ronnie work really well together. Because they're kind of... We never, really ever, ever see them together similar. again, though. Because they, yeah. they play off of each other. The Ronnie's like, oh, I need, I need my pills. And the, and the Master is just... Oh yes, she does. I know she'll have a seizure. Seizure. I've seen it. Right, right, right. It's right. just. It's it's a it's good. Like it's a good fake. It's a great fake. People teaming up to yeah. be deceitful. To uh, it's fun. It's a fun dynamic. <laughs> is is it reminds me of like like the old Batman villains teaming up. You know, you have the Riddler and Two Face well, and two together fair, they're gonna two fair, the, the Doctor Batman. Who and that Batman show both started in the 60s so hmm. yeah I mean Andrew Wolf Robinson exactly it's, it's a lot of fun it's all a lot of fun so so we cut back to the Doctor in the forest right with the landmines alright so he's he's falling he, he escapes slipping. um anyway the Master and the Ronnie are have gone back to Ronnie's TARDIS. 
the doctor catches up with Perry, mm -hmm. and they're in the caves, and the masters come back deciding to fight while the is about to leave, and the master zaps a couple at the doctor, but he knocks out one of the poles or two of the poles holding up the cave. The mass uh, doctor the and Perry leave while the the cave-in's happening. Mm -hmm. Mass and Ronnie go in the TARDIS, uh, the Ronnie's TARDIS. Uh, the doctor and Perry escape from the mine. The master and the Ronnie's are in the Ronnie's TARDIS. And the Ronnie's TARDIS was jiggered by the doctor to move as fast in the future as possible and as far away as possible because he had the tools on him from when he was working on his TARDIS. So they are accelerating the future, accelerating that into the vast uh, nethers. And while they're doing that, <laughs> one of the Tyrannosaurus Rex's embryos gets knocked off its plinth, its pedestal, and then starts growing because of the time Accelerated time. time slippage, right? So why is it that time slippage accelerates the growth of this embryo T-Rex? What, you know, other time restraints don't apply to it, like food, it doesn't starve to death instantly. Necessary plot. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so... It's so uh, very much cliffhanger for the villains at this yes, point. Yes, they're, they're literally like stuck on the walls of the Ronnie's TARDIS like a big twirl of world. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's a Tyrannosaurus Rex about to devour. Yeah, the, and the doctor got us. Yep, and the doctor and Perry managed to get back to the um, the workshop. The, yeah, the, and the... in the meantime, there's a couple of scenes I think are cut out of this. Yeah, the, uh, apparently the doctor set up this scenario where he, he asked them to go retrieve his TARDIS out right, of the right, cold right. pit. And, 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 they did. and they do, and oh, great, and, thank you. And we, the viewers, are very much in the same perspective as Perry because she's like, what about this? What about that? And the doctor's tying off Lays, all these Lays, loose Lays, ends. Lays. He's like, he's like, oh, I already arranged for that. And I already got the people to retrieve the TARDIS. And she's like, oh, I, what? When? And he's like, don't ask questions. Yeah, it's it's, it's a big trouble like, in Doctor Who's We are later. the viewers, and they never do. Our Perry's perspective of like, wait, what? But when? And the doctor's like, eh, we didn't have time. <laughs> it happened off camera. Don't worry about big it. Big trope in Doctor Who. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the Doctor and Perry had the TARDIS, and the TARDIS leaves, and uh, what's his name? Stronghold. We have uh, Lord Ravensworth and George Stevenson. Right. And like, where'd they go? And strange fellow. Official. And of episode two. What are your questions? The end. Uh, genius meeting almost canceled, but Master gives cute guy the worm. Dot dot dot. Winky <laughs> face. Uh, no questions there. Test two babies. We talked about the the Roddy's Tortoise Tardis and the baby Tyrannosaurus Rexes. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about the remote Tardis and how apparently that's never been invented before. Uh, the Ronnie apparently is a genius, and you know more power to her. Um, I like that that she's more of uh, a specialized genius specifically towards biomechanics and chemistry and she makes toxins and was in some kind of like and things. Yeah, yeah, a more organic version of the technological genius of, of gadgets and stuff, where, which is the master. So it's, it's it's cool that the, the the two villains with these two different specialized each villains. Other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something that we haven't really seen. We've seen villains team up in the past, like the Master and utilizes the Santarans or something, but we haven't really seen... The Daleks or the Cybermen, yeah. We haven't really seen two villains as equals team up against the Doctor. And that's kind of what the Ronnie and the Master are. They're kind of like equal ex... Uh, uh, what was it called? I mean, Ex exiled <laughs> time lords. Okay, 
I yeah, think, I think we've seen some uh, bad guys more or less team up who are more or less equal. Hmm. Yeah, it's more... In the past where we've seen multiple villains versus the Doctor, it's always like a hierarchy, like the Daleks and the sub subordinate villains that the Daleks are just kind of playing towards their own means. Whereas... We get this kind of rivalry between the Ronnie and the Master, but they're they're kind of intellectually even. Although, although there's some there's some bad guys where like, they may not be intellectually evil, but they're they intellectually equal, but they're pretty much equal, like uh, the Daleks and Linton. Linton, yeah, he he's kind of like a morally great character <laughs> that operates in this <laughs> ambiguous zone. We won't talk about Linton. <laughs> we will eventually, <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's, there's too much Linton. <laughs> not, <laughs> not this episode. <laughs> okay. Any other quotes? Uh, the Doctor talks about guns. Mm. Uh, we have Colin Baker, the, the very dark Doctor strangles his own companion. Yeah, he doesn't like guns. She's <laughs> apparently also as a pacifist, he said, guns, I've given them up. Yeah. Which is, I feel like is not true, because we, <laughs> a couple of serials ago, he, he definitely Because in this serial, up. he's holding the master's gun, yeah, trying to yeah, yeah, kill him, yeah. So I don't know what that's all about. I feel like the Colin Baker's doctor is having some serious identity issues. And we have this weird regeneration scramble where he's kind of lost and his his normal characteristic traits don't take root and is that something deeper do we explore that more later is that ever explained or they kind of just forget about you know what the cause of this weird regeneration is the latter they never. They, oh, they yeah. Do, it's, it's never they don't. Okay. Probably explain. Yeah. Um. Trying to read my own handwriting. <laughs> uh, I have the the stereotypical question of Do we ever see this villain again? Being the Ronnie, and you yeah, said we do. Twice more. Twice up. more. Twice more. Twice more. Yeah, Time in the Rami and the Children in the 30th Anniversary Special. Oh, guns. Uh, that's it. Yep, that's all my questions. Pretty straightforward serial. We yes. Have a few questions for episodes yes. one and two. Uh, we already talked about Doctor Who news. Uh, I guess that about rounds it up. Is there anything else on your mind that you know? Nope. Next week, um, my next favorite week? serial from the Sixth Doctor, the Two, two doctors. doctors. They had to bring in a different Doctor to make him better. To make you <laughs> the favorite of this Doctor. <laughs> Cheers, man. All that this Doctor was lacking was a different Doctor. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Well, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Thanks. See you next week. Hopefully on Monday. Whoop.